What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is part two of the automated special. I realized in part one, I didn't take a moment and introduce us. And so real quick, I'm going to let everyone go around and introduce themselves. I'm John Levesque. I'm the senior platform evangelist. I am the host of the automated show. Uh, Pranav, why don't you go ahead next? Hi, I'm Pranav Rasuli. I work on the Parcat team uh, focusing on automation. And I, I like John, Kent, and Apostolos. <laughs> Apostolos, you're next. Yeah, I'm also a PM in the Powercard team looking after automation RPA and working with uh, Kent and Pranav. Awesome. And Kent? Once again, also part of the Powercat team. I'm focused on uh, RPA and Power Automates naturally, and then also spend some time in the Power Virtual Agents side of things as well. Yes, yes. Fun stuff. Okay. So in part one, we gave an overview of what it means to bring the heat, holistic enterprise automation techniques. And so now we're going to dive in. And so in part two here, we're going to talk about empowering, discovering, and planning. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Pranav, who's going to dive back in and start talking about those things. Pranav, off to you, sir. Thank you so much, John. I am going to dive deep. Bad joke, I guess. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about Pranav is every time he tells a bad joke, he immediately calls it out. Because <laughs> I heard crickets. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I think you know this. This stage is is largely about uh, just kind of sort of discovering what does the automation platform or what is the automation story with the power platform looks like, uh, especially as a customer, if you're coming to the power platform for the first time and you've not been using uh, Power Apps or Power BI or any of the other assets, then it's just good to sort of level set and who, what does the platform offer? Who are we targeting? Like, you know, how does the Fusion team all work? And uh, we have some good trainings, which are like RP in a day. It's a light paid training that you can take for eight hours. It sort of gives you a good breadth of the platform uh, and just sort of sets you up with these uh, scenario based exercises that let, that you sort of envision some of these RPA scenarios that you're going to have. And, you know, largely in the discovery and the plan bucket, what we generally see people try to get to is like, which, you know, which, what should I automate? Like, I have like hundreds of processes and like, should I go back and fix all of my previous automations? Like, so how should I go about? You know, prioritizing which automation I, I should pick, and and a few key metrics that uh, you know CEOs tend to look for are around, uh, hey, how much time am I saving for an employee, or am I improving the employee productivity, or am I you know, saving cost, or am I reducing the error rate, uh, or like it's just about upskilling as well, where if I enable somebody to learn something and it makes them happier and more productive to the point that they can, I, I say like you know work themselves out of the current job to a different job, you know, that's a good way of sort of uh, rolling out automation as well. And then I think some key learnings uh, are when when people think about scenario envisioning, it's a key aspect to think about what is the upstream and the downstream impact of the process, because often enough what we see customers do is they'll come with an RPA process and just redo the RPA process from one tool to the other, which is not very useful because you really want to see what was the automation being called from and what is the automation doing and maybe there are exam there are different ways to solve the process so one key example is like you know i was working with a customer and they wanted just to optimize excel macros and that's it because they're like hey i have you know 100 plus business users they have like i don't know 2000 excel macros and it's a governance nightmare and stuff so but we realized the the problems was data entry, and that's why the Excel macros were so complex. And and then we decided to build some lightweight power apps to automate the process of uh, inputting data and stuff. Uh, and largely, when you think about platform, uh, you know, we talked about a little bit in, in in our intro. Is it's not just the power platform; it's also it's also Azure, it's also F three sixty five. So think about how how all of these concepts kind of come together, and then sort of formulate some strategies on how are we going to do sort of your environment management, your accounts management, uh, your networks, your, your dev design philosophies, uh, what's your deployment uh, gates going to look like, how are you going to manage and support the bots, how are, we, how are you going to receive requests from your citizen developers and sort of deploy bots into production. 
And then how, what's your strategy to scale? Like, are you going to scale independently as a COE or are you going to scale with the power platform? Are you going to scale with the M365? And so it's very key to sort of up the very upfront and and very pointy in, in terms of uh, how you're going to address and sort of formulate these strategies before you go deeper uh, into your automation journey. Yeah. And just to sort of. Uh, I was going to say, I think it's, these are really paramount steps to your to your journey, right? To, to, to doing things properly. It's like uh, the way I like to think about this, a good analogy is you can't have a good sandbox without walls, right? Otherwise, it's just a pile of sand in the yard, right? You have to put up walls and, and barriers and, and a place that's safe to play where you say, oh, this is where we keep the sand, right? And, and, and this process is trying to discover what that is. What does my sandbox need to look like? What does it need to contain? Does it need to have you know high walls? Does it need to have some extra toys? What is it that this environment looks like? And then going ahead and, and building that to suit your business, right? And, and so I think giving a, a safe place for people to play ahead of time instead of trying to be reactive is, is definitely going to be a, a, a big thing to set you up for success. Yeah, See, no, I like no. to look at it as the, the bowling alley where they put in the bumper, the bumper pads like in the actual <laughs> gutters itself to make sure the ball is in play. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's a great analogy too. I haven't heard the sandbox one. I do like that. Uh, quick shout out. Uh, we've talked about RPA in a day previously on automated. So if people are curious what that is, go ahead and look at that. Maybe we can include a link in this description. Also, shameless plug as well, on December 16th, we're updating RPA in a day as well to include the process advisor lab. And that's the, we talked a little bit about that on the intro. So that's be something for, for people to follow up on as well. You know, if you guys haven't seen Process Advisor, go check that out immediately. That tool is bananas. I I saw a demo of that and I just I couldn't believe what what they were putting out and, and how quick it all came together. It's go go look at it now. Yeah, we've the my my bowling alley analogy is uh, to have uh, swimming swim lanes. But, <laughs> a bowling alley with swim lanes. I like it. <laughs> and 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 I think what you know, I'm going to show you a, a few key concepts uh, just to sort of level set, and, and you know, how can you go about thinking about some of these key areas? So, uh, I have demo time. These tabs open. Yeah, demo time actually. Uh, All right. So when you um, sort of think about, oh, sorry, let me, all right, uh, no, not this. Is it in a different tab in one of your 10 windows? Uh, no, I think this is good enough. <laughs> um, so often enough when people start with the automation, you know, they, they, they start sort of going down the, you know, They'll start creating power automate flows or they'll start creating power automate apps and stuff. And that's one of the cases where they don't create those swim lanes or bowling alleys um, early enough. And what happens in that situation is basically like you've gone too deep too quickly and you've not sort of understood what the platform has to offer. So it's always good to sort of take a step back and, and you know look at the holistic view as to how does these Lego different Lego boxes come in together and, and what's why why is it important? So that's why I wanted to show you some of these key aspects where you know at its core we are based on Active Directory as a key foundation. So this is a the Microsoft 365 admin center. And so this is an admin center where Microsoft Office admins can go buy subscriptions for office services and stuff. And this is an area where somebody would come and purchase uh, a license for Power Automate as well. So, you know, they'll say, I want to have either Power Apps or Power Automate licenses. And uh, as you purchase office licenses, you will purchase uh, these RPA licenses that you can then use for attended or for unattended scenarios. And then you'll go ahead and start assigning uh, your licenses to your users over here. Uh, and so this is how a user is born in the system. And I had to use that because uh, you know that's how I learned how the system works. And so we have a post list who's already registered in the system. 
and he's a global admin. And you would see that if I look at licenses and apps, he does have these licenses assigned to him. So he does have the attended RPA. So he can build bots that can run attended. And uh, currently we have six out of the 25 licenses available. And the, the key thing. I need a license. <laughs> and, and so now so this is how the user sort of starts. You know? And the key thing over here is like I was mentioning that everything is sort of backed by Active Directory. And what I can start doing as an organization is I can have these different groups and teams that I can start creating. Hey, this is the dev team, this is the prod team, and this is the test team. And I can start defining what policies they can have. Like, you know, the dev team can't access the prod environment. The prod environment can only be accessed by certain users. And if I have a dev team, then maybe I can create some organizational based flows that I can share with the dev team as a best practice. So I can start to create those uh, sort of building blocks over there. And uh, how it maps nicely to is basically like if I go look at my Power Platform environments, you can see I can restrict access by the security groups that I just created in Office. So I have a single place where I can add and remove users. If a new developer joins my team, I just think add them to the security group and then they'll have access to this environment. Uh, going on, you know, where sort of the magic starts to come in is if I switch over to Azure and look at my Active Directory, which is the core foundation, I'll, we'll start to see the same users and same groups sort of flow through as well. So the information is flowing through and through, and that's the core of who we are. And as I add and remove users, I can uh, they'll be reflected in all the three places. I can also sort of go ahead and define, uh, you know, what kind of service principles do I want to create? Uh, what sort of key vault policies I want to create? What kind of permissions does the user have on all of those groups? And then also, I can start to define like, hey, maybe the developers cannot create resources because they'll probably run a huge bill. So you want to have some governance policies around it where the ops uh, department can create uh, resources for you and then you can use it and stuff. But then all of it is sort of backed by, uh, you know, the core foundation of Active Directory, uh, having it all sort of linked together. And that information sort of flows through and through as well uh, to the point where once you start going down from the environment level and you start looking at uh, different users, uh, you can start to have those uh, uh, policies that you can define. So which user has access to which uh, entity or table now in Microsoft Dataverse. Uh, and then the beauty of it is that once you have teams as well, then those groups should start to show up over here. So you can now have a dev channel where devs can interact with each other if you're, you know, collaborating with the citizen developers as well, this is what often we have seen is they'll create a Teams group where you have the citizen developers or your local developers and your pro code developers. They're working on the same channel, sharing information, uh, doing reviews and stuff. So it just becomes a very collaborative experience that kind of comes together with identity as sort of the key foundation uh, that we base this out of. And this sort of becomes a key building block uh, for you know all of our uh, all of our steps in the journey of the automation, but uh, we, I just wanted to stress that that fact because often enough, we st a lot of customers start too deep too early, and they kind of miss this whole arc of what is the platform and the value of the platform. So that sort mm -hmm. of for me is the key message in this, uh, you know, this empowered discovery uh, phase is getting this concept of uh, Active Directory and the concept of groups users that you can have then control on what licenses and access they have and those are back policies sort of flow all the way to the resource level to the data level um, and you could be using Azure or N365 or uh, Power Platform or Dynamics or Teams like all those policies and and, and, and groups will sort of flow through the system and that is the beauty of, uh, of, 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 of that foundation uh, over here. And just uh, I guess one other benefit would also just be around the automation opportunities as well. So because you're using Azure AD and you are using groups, that means we have connectors that we can also tap into in order to automate. So you can start with even onboarding when basically a manager is assigning a new user into specific groups. And then all of a sudden this just like proliferates throughout the entire environment. and. And certainly from an offboarding perspective, the, that would also be the same as well. So it's a great way to even use Flow to even help for Power Automate to help with the automation of those activities too. Man, I, I feel like that was really rad. I've actually, 
never seen the full trail of how like the 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 entire like just starting over in AD and how it proliferates entirely across every view like that. I've never actually taken the time to track it all like that, but to see how like each of those portals you went to might have a different group of admins, right? They they might be administrated by different teams or different areas of the team. And so for them to have that unified view, no matter what portal they're in, is pretty amazing. And then even to come all the way through to teams where normal business users are to keep that same structure living across. I mean, I think that's just that's pretty fantastic. And 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 I, I knew that that existed. But to see it all actually like a spider web like that really kind of just cemented it for me as how how next level that really is. It also becomes even more next level when you start to think about the data roles inside of Dataverse as well, which would also be applicable here if you needed to assign that to a specific AD group as well. Um, that's another opportunity that does exist as well. And then you can have yeah. feed level, column level security. Like it's 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 like it's just insane. Like. Uh, I had the same uh, reaction, John, when I sort of, you know, tried that whole arc. It was like, wow, this is like amazing. Yeah. Like, it, it just flows. You don't have to sync anything. You, it just flows. The information just Yeah, flows. and we, we take it for granted, right? So, I mean, working with the, the low-code tool nowadays, uh, you just log in, you have your license assigned, then you get going, you know. But what happens, you know, in the back end and what information and uh, security principles apply to make that uh, really guard railing possible and also be safe and secure and so on, it's really sometimes we forget that. We just take it for granted. And imagine now, you know, revoking access from a very scattered system uh, of a user to revoke those those user rights. It is traditionally really a nightmare, but here you just enable and disable a user on AID, and that's it. And this propagates, you know, all the way down to all the automations you're doing, power ups, and so on. So, Azure Active Directory and Active Directory is, I think, the core concept in the security model, which is really the one of the best foundations of that platform. Whatever comes on top of that is really uh, just taking advantage advantage of that. And what Kent also said, you know, when we are thinking also about Dataverse. And all uh, those security principles, we are just again part of the automation, the power platform stack, and Dynamics 365, and so on. So to leverage those kind of uh, uh, principles in your automation is quite easy and powerful. You will see also in a subsequent video when we do an end-to-end -end demo, uh, you know, pointing those things out, right? So, and I think it's it's our job to surface those capabilities more often, just to make folks aware that. There's much more than only that spectrum of automation. So, you know, some talk about hyper automation, some talk about intelligent automation. I would say this is really about having the foundation to do robust, uh, intelligent, and and really, uh, uh, you know, enterprise grade operations and automation. That's the thing. Absolutely. That's that's this is awesome. This was a great demonstration. Pranav, any any final thoughts on this one? Identity rocks. Go for it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right, my friends. So that's going to be it for part two here. We're going to go ahead and wrap this one up, and we will see you in the next video.